So um, thanks everyone for joining us today. We appreciate it. Um, I'm Zach with Game Master and that is Doug there as well. Um, and today we are talking uh, about one of our newer products. I say new because uh, it's a couple years old, but it's probably the newest of the three items that we've done so far. Um, we're talking about the SWAX baseball, and then we're also talking about the SWAX softball. So um, a little bit of history on this item. You know, this came to us as an opportunity from a company that was selling a similar training ball, but in a lacrosse space. Uh, they wanted to get into the baseball space as well and put us in contact with them. And um, we started rolling this out in 2021. So a um, couple of benefits and features I'll talk about and Doug, you know, obviously feel free to, to chime in on these, but it's uh, official size and weight of a real baseball. Um, we kind of look at this as a kid's first baseball. So um, it's a softer ball. It can be hit, thrown, caught uh, for these younger kids. One of the biggest things that we've seen is that kids, um, you know, when they're learning to play catch, they get hit. They're they're scared of the ball, right? So they came out with this idea. We thought it had a great application for baseball um, as well as softball. Um, and again, we've seen a ton of success with it. So, Doug, what would you like to to add on that? No. Yeah, just just when you when you compare them to a regular baseball, like uh, the important part is that it's the exact same size and weight as a regular baseball. But uh, certainly, when we use it with with kids, especially a young young age, there's a lot of fear when people are throwing a, a hard baseball right. at you. So, yep. so this, um, you know, this isn't going to hurt anybody. It's a soft uh, outer outer shell, uh, if you want to call it that. But it 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 really is a good, easy way to to still teach them the fundamentals of the game, but just get over that fear early. Um, get them to build some confidence early on. And uh, I, I think that's where it's uh, found a really, really good uh, market. And for me, uh, you know, teaching my kids as they were growing up, you know, the fundamentals of the game, fear was always one of those things <laughs> that you had to yep. contend with. Yep. And especially um, uh, my son was a catcher when he was young. And, and uh, as a catcher, you know, you got to really get in front of these balls and 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 block uh, the plate and stuff. So this is a, a great way to transition them into into working with some of those um, you know harder balls and harder pitches. So so yeah, it's been a great product for us. Yeah, I think one thing you touched on is you know the similarities with a baseball, a real life baseball, because I think. Yeah, there's a lot of other training balls out there. And of course, we're biased to ours and we think ours is probably the best as far as the kids first version. But I think a lot of the stuff, you know, people will go to maybe a tennis ball or mm -hmm. something like that or some type of softer ball that doesn't actually weigh, you know, nine ounces like a baseball does or excuse me, five ounces um, with the same mm -hmm. diameter. So I think they'll go that route, but then they get a real baseball catching is one thing, throwing is a completely different thing, because again, you're talking about a, a significant difference yeah. in weight. And that was kind of the ideal of uh, this is replicating something closest to a, a baseball without, you know, if you get hit yeah. in the head, it's not well, going to feel great, but it feels a lot better than a real baseball. Yeah. Know? We see tons of coaches that use tennis balls to teach pop flies, but, right. but the, the weight of the tennis ball going into your glove really doesn't teach you, uh, the 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 real impact of a baseball right. and and a lot of kids it'll bounce completely out of their yep. out of their glove things like that um so so i think this um uh, provides that that realism around mm -hmm. training even just plain old catching when you catch this ball it gives you the feel it gets the the ball in the pocket and and yep. even even to teach them transitioning from glove to hand this is more realistic mm -hmm. compared to a tennis ball or, or things like that. Yeah. That was one of the first things I think we noticed when we brought this product into test first, before we decided we want to move forward with it was, you know, <clears throat> being a, um, a former player as well. And, you know, that was one of my biggest concerns was how is it going to feel when it hits your mitt? You know, mm -hmm. how's it going to feel when you throw it? And, I will say from my perspective, again, I know I'm biased, but I feel like from the baseball side of it, that it's a synthetic leather material that we have with this. So it feels very similar to a real ball 
when it does hit your mitt, it feels like it's a real baseball, and then we transition into a regular ball. So there wasn't a lot of difference there. The only thing is, again, the softer material as well, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, no, it's a, yeah, a hundred percent. That's what makes it, makes it unique. And that's, that's where me as a coach really like, um, training with this because you don't have to teach them with one ball and then transition to a baseball. Right. Afterwards. Right. Yeah. And so I know we have a couple things queued up as far as, you know, some videos and some drills and stuff to it. And we can touch on the softball as well too. Um, you know, with the softball, typically there's two different sizes of a softball. We see an 11 inch and then a 12 inch softball. So the softball that we have um, here is actually in fact, 11 inch softball. Same application, but we want to make sure we included softball players with this as well. I think a lot of times, um, I don't know how many training softballs there are out there. I know there's more training baseballs in the market, um, but, you know, the same application applies from the softball side of it that does the baseball that, you yeah. know, it's kind of kids first baseball or softball, so to speak. But we wanted to make sure we included them in that market as well, um, yeah. you know, to give that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the fundamentals are the same. <laughs> it's just right. the, the size of the ball that's different, but uh, the fundamentals and getting them. And even one thing I, I I should have commented on earlier is when you're when you're teaching a kid to stand in the batter's box too, and mm -hmm. there's there's balls being thrown at them. You know, a lot of kids are backing out of that box, right. and and yep. so. So <laughs> I've worked with some kids with these that I, I throw the ball, I have them stand there and I throw and hit them with it. And they soon realize, <laughs> okay, doesn't right. hurt. So yeah. w why am I backing out? Um, so just, you know, uh, I found, especially when we got to the, to the kids pitch type of age group, mm -hmm. pretty erratic where the pitches are going. And that's ten right. tends to be where a lot of that fear is developed. So even with the kid, kids pitch like getting them in the batter's box you can hit these balls um right the the difference is they're not going to fly like a regular baseball because they're soft on the outside but you can still teach the fundamentals of picking up the the ball and hitting balls that are in the strike zone and stuff without that fear of of being hit so i guess it mm -hmm. does add that other dimension other than fielding and catching that uh, could be applied using this ball yeah, you talk about, you know, baseball and softball are such mental games um, as, as it stands, you know, especially at the higher level you get up. But, you know, you start, as you mentioned, a kid that gets hit with the ball, they're kind of like, I don't want to do this anymore. They don't want to dig <laughs> yeah. in in the batter's box. But if they get hit yeah. with something that doesn't hurt as bad, they're like, oh, that's not so bad. And they have yeah. more of a focused approach, you know, at the plate or they can work on their fundamentals rather yeah. than worried about getting hit by a ball. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I know you have a couple of videos queued up. Um, we talked just about some like introductory drills um, of ways that, you know, being a kid's first baseball that they can start learning the hand-eye coordination. Um, so we'll go yeah. to those here in just a second. Yeah. And what, you know, with the, with the drills, I, I think a, a lot of parents and coaches can, can work through their own kind of mm -hmm. drills, but a lot of the basics that you would do um, from a catching standpoint, you know, like, getting the, the kid to position the glove correctly, all those sort of things and throwing the ball. Those are just fundamentals. Uh, same with the fly balls. And we'll demonstrate some of these things in, in the video, but even getting uh, an assortment of drills uh, using the, using the ball. So you'll see uh, our friend uh, Matt Antonelli uh, demoing some of these drills with with his son and and getting his his son to run uh, sideways <laughs> and catch right. a ball and and things like this. So you'll see a few different drills here that kind of highlight those things. And the other thing is the fielding um, drills too is is with young kids is is rolling the ball uh, to a player and just working on those fundamentals rolling it side to side. Um, mm -hmm. They don't have to worry about, you know, the ball coming up and hitting them in the face or anything like this. They can just relax and kind of, kind of do that. And then, um, you know, to, to add as much dimension to it as, as, as possible um, with your different types of, of pitches, like get them in the batter's box and things like this, 
But then when you're working with catchers, you know, getting them to block this ball, like getting right. them used to positioning the body and, and stuff like that. So any of the fundamental training that you would typically do with kids can be done with these balls. So we'll show you a few of those drills to, to work through, but we'd, you know, love to see some of, uh, some of our customers post some of the videos on how they're, they're using yep. these, these products as well. But, um, uh, uh, I can see all kinds of uh, uses of this and, and you can, you can throw these like with our pitching machines and stuff like that. So if you want to simulate pitches with right. our pitching machines, throw, throw these balls, you know, and get them in the batter's box and take that fear away. So, so let's go through some of those, some of those drills here and uh, you can see a few of the samples and then we'll, uh, we'll keep adding uh, as, uh, in future videos on like other things that you can do with these, uh, these swax balls as well. Yeah. Okay. So we start off juggling two balls. Number one, it's fun. He always wants to do it. Number two, we're just warming up. So we're working on some hand-eye coordination. We start flipping the ball low and then we progress to flipping it higher. Then I flip to him with his glove on and no movement. So I flip it right to him. I start below the waist. We work on catching with our fingers down. And then we go above the waist, working on catching with our fingers up. Then we do the same thing with no glove on. So he needs a little bit more focus and concentration. We then flip to each other at the same time. He loves doing this. It is fun for him to do this. It takes a little bit more focus and we like to see who drops the ball first. And I may every now and then miss on purpose. He gets a laugh out of that. Then we flip two balls at the same time. Now this is very challenging, uh, but it works on some more hand-eye coordination and just keeps things fun. I then progress the flips right at him so he doesn't need to move anywhere. And we're gonna work on catching the ball over our head with our fingers up. Now we start to move. So I have him run right at me and I start with balls below the waist so that he can catch with his fingers down. And then we go above the waist, catching with our fingers up. Now a few points that I make, I try to teach him to keep running. A lot of kids, when they do this, they want to stop to catch the ball. So I'll tell him to run through the catch. You have to get used to catching the ball while on the run. And we then do the same type of drill, but we're working on catching it backhand and then forehand. So again, it's run through the catch, don't stop, get comfortable catching on the run. Then we go to very high pop-ups. This just depends on how good the player is at catching. So don't rush to this point. It's very important. I want to make sure that he's comfortable and confident before I start throwing balls way up in the air. If you do this too soon and all the player does is drop the ball or worst case scenario, the ball hits them in the face or the head, they're going to get really frustrated or they're going to get hurt and they're not going to want to continue to play or practice. So from there, we go to running catches from both sides. So I'll have him open up to his right and catch the ball on the run. And then we'll have him open up to the left and catch on the run. Now my coaching point for this is that I want him to try to run and keep his head as quiet as possible so his eyes aren't bouncing up and down. And again, we're gonna to try to catch these on the run. And then from there, we just finish off with playing normal catch and you can move back as far as the player is comfortable. Again, if they're very new to catching, start close. As they get better, you just continue to increase the distance. And same thing with the speed of my throws. So I would start off very slow, but then as the player gets better, I start to throw it faster. So here are a few more things to keep in mind when doing all of these drills. I always like to start with the easiest drills and then I'll progress to the hardest. I also don't coach every rep and I always keep it positive. If he misses the ball, I keep going. I don't say a word. When we finish the round, I may give a quick tip or two, but I never say, you know, come on, or hey, you gotta catch that ball if he drops it. I hear that a lot when parents are playing catch with their kids. In my experience, kids get frustrated very easy when this happens. And for my son, I feel that he always wants to play catch because he knows that he isn't going to get yelled at 
if he misses the ball. A few things to, to think about here. When you're catching the ball, the first thing that we're going to teach is to catch the ball with your fingers up. Okay, so Maddie, could you stand on, stand on home plate for a minute? Okay, so we're going to start off by throwing the ball in three different locations. So we're going to start to his glove side. He's going to have his fingers up. He's going to catch the ball. Then we're going to throw the ball right in front of his face. He's going to catch the ball fingers up. And then we're going to work over to his non-glove side fingers up. And then we're going to come back. So we're just going to go back and forth. All right, so you can think about it. Let me step in here real quick. So you can think about the movement of the hand and glove back and forth here, working on all three points. And I'm going to call it out, right? So I'm going to say for, for him, it'll be here, here, here. So it's glove side, middle, non-glove side, middle, glove side. Same thing for a righty. So we're going to break this down into uh, a couple different steps. So the first step that we do, Maddie, come over here real quick. Take your glove off for a second. All right, so the first way we start doing this is with no glove on. All right, so we're going to go no glove. Again, just getting used to having the fingers up. That's really important. One thing that players do, a lot of young players, when the ball gets up into this area, sometimes they'll try to turn their hand over like this to catch the ball instead of just catching with their fingers up like this. All right? It's going to hit them in the face. Exactly. So it's, it's like he's just said. They're nervous the ball might hit them in the face, okay? So that's why, especially again, with players that don't feel comfortable, start with something very, very soft. Safety, is, for me, safety is the biggest thing when it comes to these drills. The last thing you want to do is hit a young kid right in the teeth, right in the face. They're not going to want to play baseball anymore or softball anymore, okay? So make sure you start off with a softball, especially for players that don't feel really comfortable. Let's start off here. We're going to have him stand on the plate. So he's going to put both feet on the plate. He's going to go no glove. He's going to go fingers up. And we're just going to work our hand back and forth, catching in three different spots. Again, I'm going to tell him where we're throwing the ball. So think of it almost like a windshield wiper that's going to work back and forth, and you're going to hit all three spots. You ready? OK. You can see he's got like ants in his pants. He's all over the place. OK. So here we go. So stand on the plate. Make sure when you go bare hand that you are, they're doing it with their glove hand. Sometimes they get confused and use the wrong hand. So Maddie's a lefty, so his glove would be on his right hand. All right, so. I, like to use my left hand. I know. Okay, so let's start off fingers up, glove side. Okay, so here you go. Put your fingers up, get in position, catch it, flip it back. Now go right in front of your face, fingers up, catch it, flip it back. Now let's go to non-glove side, fingers up, catch it, flip it back. Now let's go back to in front of your face, fingers up, catch it, flip it back. Now let's go on this side right here, fingers up, catch it, flip it back. Okay, so we've gone through all of those spots right there. Now what I'm going to do, the next progression, is I'm not going to tell him where I'm going to flip it, okay? So, st so stand on that plate again. So now I'm not telling him where I'm going to flip it. It's going to be above his waist, so he's going to have fingers up. Ready? So get ready here. I'm not going to tell you where. I'm either going to flip it to your glove side, to your face, or to your non-glove side. You're going to catch it and flip it back. Ready? Catch it. Flip it back. Good. Fingers up. Catch it. Flip it back. Fingers up. Catch it. Flip it back. Okay? So we go through that. Awesome. Cool. Um, good stuff in the video. Um, I think there's a lot of things to take away from that. Good opportunities, um, you know, for kids that are just learning the game and learning just to catch for, for the first time ever, you know. And, and as you mentioned, you know, the coaches that are out there, if they have specific drills, we'd love to see those as well, too, um, you know, because they're kind of the experts in the field um, of play. One thing, you know, we talked about a little bit earlier and um, the different uses and applications for this. And you know as well as I do, you're in Canada, we're in Cincinnati, so springtime sometimes comes very, very late to us. And a lot of times, you know, we start off the baseball season indoors, you know, whether that people are doing fall ball or they're doing stuff in the wintertime, it's usually a gymnasium, a training facility. And not all training facilities have good quality floors and turf fields and nets and everything like that. Some people are just using, um, you know, gymnasium. So, yeah. you know, one of the applications we saw was you know the the indoor use um for those teams and 
leagues that are unable to get outside early, which is literally half the country. Obviously, yeah. everyone in Canada, you know, <laughs> Every, <usually>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It's certainly a, a great indoor item. Um, you know, many of the many of the non turf facilities in Canada. Um, you know, they have restriction on uh, hitting live ball. <laughs> so, right. so, right. you know, uh, you can take some of these, it's a, it's kind of like hitting a dead ball. So it's not going to fly super far, but it does give you the same I impact. It's the same weight of ball and, and stuff as you, as you hit. So, so it's, um, it's a, a really good indoor item even for for grounder training that's that sort of stuff so it's it's definitely a, a must have in colder climates um you know not yeah. not ever but the the key is and and speaking from my experience like you want to get them training as early as possible because our right. season is so short that right. uh we, we you want to get them throwing live ball and and that's another part is is working on their arm strength and their shoulder um shoulder strength and and things like this if you're not throwing the same weight of ball you're not right. getting the same muscle memory built in your in your arm arms to to throw and things like this so so indoor training with this is a great way to build up that arm strength in the early season. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Good stuff. Well, Doug, I think we've covered most, uh, most applications and, and things with yeah. the SWACs, baseballs and softballs. Um, you know, again, we appreciate the time. Um, and, yeah. and as Doug mentioned earlier, you know, any of the coaches, uh, parents that have questions, concerns, please reach out to us. Um, there's obviously going to be a link in the video to contact information, whether our website or your phone call. Yeah. Um, you know, so again, we appreciate the time and um, we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank Chat you. soon. Cool.